Today we're going to take a bunch of samples and turn it into something we can play on a MIDI keyboard using contact. So in this project, I have a bunch of sounds from a sampling session of what's called a crash box, a, a box full of just broken bits of junk, wood and metal and screws and rocks and sand and stuff like that, taped up in a box, and you throw it at the, at the ground and record the sounds that it makes. Um, lots of different impacts and things like that. Let's just hear a couple seconds of this. So lots of different impacts with some metal and, and glass sounds. Um, pretty useful stuff. What I'd like to do is just put it onto a MIDI keyboard so that I can play it across the white keys and have all these different sounds rather than digging through a folder. The way I originally planned to do this sound library was to export uh, just a few audio files and then mark them with media cues. And so that's what you're seeing here. This region impacts hard is the entire length of the file. And then each of these markers is where there's a separate sound. And there's a small gap of silence between. That works great, but you can't easily play it on a keyboard. What I feel is the best tool for this is Contact. I'm going to show you how to import sounds um, into Contact and map them across the keys so that they can then be played. Before we do that, we've got to get these sounds out of this project in a certain way. So these are short bits of the original recordings. These haven't been rendered out. Uh, you can see the file name says raw here. And there's various effects and level adjustments and things on each of these sounds. I'm just going to export these, uh, these two sets of sounds. And I'm going to set this up by going to the extensions menu and marker utilities and converting all of my markers to regions. Uh, I just need to adjust a couple of these now. And we can expand the ruler to show all of our regions here now. So I'm going to get rid of this first one by just alt clicking. I'm going to go to this last region and make sure that it ends um, at this line rather than extending out to the next, the next hit. So there's that, and this last one. I can just shrink this down. And now I have, I think it's 49 or so samples to export. So I'm going to go to the View menu and open up the Region Render Matrix. In here, I've got, let's see, um, I'm going to export the submaster tracks. Master track or the submaster track in this case would be the exact same. Um, but I'll just do this. I'll just kind of drag across on all of these um, regions up to there. OK. So now the submaster track, everything going through that is going to be rendered out um, within the time bounds of these regions. Now I click on Render. I have it set to all project regions here. Um, that's going to be all the project regions that are enabled for rendering in the region manager or re region matrix. Not using a tail on this, and I'm just going to set up a folder. So the folders that I want this to export into don't exist yet, so we can actually use a slash. And so this will be contact, and then slash again, and samples, slash again. And now it's the file name, which I want uh, crashbox underscore dollar sign region number. And so it's going to export region two as the first file. That's fine. It, it, I'm not too picky about that stuff, as long as all the files get exported. And I'll just click on Render 49 Files. I go over to my folder here, Contact, Samples, and these files are being created. And it's done. So now I'm going to open up Contact. And I'll do this within the same project. I, I wouldn't always do it in the same project, but, um, but yeah, it's 
simple enough to just add it to a add a virtual instrument to a new track, open up contact. I'm going to use contact five because that's the one I have the full version of. Um, contact six, the exact same process. Okay, and just want to make sure that this track is by itself. Okay. So we've got contact here. I don't need this sidebar browser. Just have this main window, and we've got all of our samples here. Um, I could renumber these, but I'm not even going to bother. So, um, you know what? I actually am going to rename these because these should say impact. I'm going to replace Crashbox with Crashbox with a capital impact. Okay. And now I'm going to double click in the contact window to make a new file. I'm going to call this Crashbox Impacts to name the uh, sample library. We're going into the Mapping Editor tab. There is a benefit to doing this in the standalone version of Contact. Um, you can actually pop out the Mapping Editor and resize it. You can have it fill the screen. It's really convenient, but it's not completely necessary. Because I want these samples only on the white keys, I'm going to do a small adjustment inside of Contact uh, just to set that up in advance of importing the samples, because it's a lot easier to do it that way. So I click on Edit in the Mapping Editor, and then come down to Map Mode, and I, it's on white keys only. Uh, the default is chromatic, so it would, it would be all white and all black keys. So white keys only, and I'm going to drag these files in, and depending on where your mouse is, like if you drag it onto a single key, it's going to map um, all of those uh, cross velocities on a single key. If we just do kind of in the bottom range, it's going to um, it's going to do a single key per sound. If I go up a bit higher, um, it uh, depending on some other settings, it will sometimes stretch across multiple samples or a, a multiple keys. It kind of depends on um, how many samples you're importing and some of the other settings in the mapping editor options. So it's a little hard here to see because the uh, finder preview uh, is right in the way. But I want this on C1. So I think I've got that on uh, actually C minus one. And let's just check if that's working. Octave down a couple times. And it's white keys only. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, velocity is, is automatically scaled. But you can adjust that as well. It's in the mod thing. And so velocity ADSR down here. There's all sorts of things. For a sample library that's just a bunch of impacts, it's pretty simple. You can just map them across the keys. You have different velocities for the same sound. It's slightly different. You would probably uh, import them kind of uh, one at a time and drag it onto a single key, and that will map them across the velocity. There's also like batch edit tools in here. I'm not going to get into it today because I don't use um, them too often. Uh, and there's also the auto map functions, uh, which are really cool. I, I've used them in the past, but I don't remember how <laughs> exactly because it's been a couple years. But yeah, this is all I would do for my own sort of basic um, sample library that I would just use in my own projects. I would go through and, and you know actually use it on a project and see what things need to be tweaked, like do the velocities need to be tweaked? But this is usable as it is. So now, click on the disk icon. I'm going to save as Crashbox Impacts, and I'm going to put this in the contact folder within my um, you know, sound library folder and save just the patch in this case. So now I can close that and let's see, there's my Crashbox Impacts file. I can drag that in or I can open up 
that from the browser in the uh, files or the database tabs. And yeah, I can play it again. So pretty simple. Um, I think it's definitely worth getting contact just because it makes that so simple. You can't do something like this with Reaper's built-in sampler. You know, it's 49 samples. You would need 49 instances of the plugin. So if you want to see more videos on using contact for uh, creating your own instruments, please let me know. And um, I'm happy to make more videos on this topic. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.